Welcome back. You're listening to Perky Collar Radio Show, and I'm your host, David M. Frankel. Our next guest this afternoon is Charlene Pugh, and she is the owner of a company called Life Survivor. Charlene, welcome to the show. Thank you, David. Well, tell us, Charlene, about Life Survivor. Why did you start the company and kind of how it's going and who you've helped in the process? Absolutely. So Life Survivor is a company that celebrates survivors. So we sell inspirational products that celebrate individuals who have gone through uh, personal hardships and overcome. Uh, We believe that, you know, individuals who have gone through, you know, adversity in life, which we believe everyone will eventually have uh, a name tag as Survivor, and we think it should be celebrated. I personally, I started Life Survivor several years ago. Um, uh, Out of my experience, my own personal battle with breast cancer, I uh, was diagnosed many years ago, and, um, you know, it's been a long time, but I can tell you I think about that diagnosis literally every day. And several years ago, I was... um, I was uh, just thinking about everything I'd been through, the whole process of chemo and diagnosis and all the individuals who were surrounding me. And I thought about two things, actually. I thought about um, the individuals who were inspiring me and telling me their personal testimonies, none of which involved cancer. So I had a light bulb moment that, you know, said, Charlene, everyone has a testimony. Everybody is a survivor. So we're all survivors. So that was the first thing. And I remember when I was battling the cancer and going through chemo, I received this wonderful gift from my employer at the time. And I remember, you know, even seven Mm -hmm. years later, I remember how significant that was to me. It was just, you know, trinkets, you know, tangible things just to inspire me. But I remember how motivated and inspirational it was to me as I was going through that, that, that battle. So I thought, hey, why not do this for others, you know, other people who are struggling, not again, not with just cancer, but all things that uh, we're faced with, uh, different types of adversity, and create a company so that individuals can gift items to survivors, and then survivors also can just purchase things for themselves just to celebrate their overcoming adversity. And so that's how the Life Survivor Company was formed. That's excellent. So tell me, uh, if you can, what was the gift that you received? So it was it was this this gift package. It had like a massager. It had some some incense, some candles, a nice card, and just those types of things that just really inspired me. And it was you know helped me to relax. And 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 you know I believe one of the items was just hey you're alive. You know you survived. So it was just a a, a wake up call. And I just think we all know this, right? We know that everyone goes through adversity, right? Everyone, you know, has personal hardships. But to 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 call it out for what it is, I think a lot of times people are really hesitant to even think about the adversity that they've been through. But we're trying to flip the norm a little bit, flip the standard with life survivors. So people can see that, hey, it's okay. You're not the only one going through. And it's probably nothing that you are going to go through that somebody else has already gone through, Mm -hmm. you know, so we all will experience different things. So again, it's just um, those tangible little trinkets that I still have actually (laughs) on my desk here. Yeah. It's a reminder of what I've been through. Right. And what I've been through, of course, doesn't define me, but it has helped me to be a stronger person, more courageous and more giving towards others. So it, it, it all, you know, comes back you know, tenfold in regards to how it makes me feel and how I inspire others as a result of how someone inspired me. Excellent. And how can people find you online or on social media? Do you have a website or? Absolutely. So we have a website. It's lifesurvivor.com. Okay. And on the website, we have survivor stories out there. We have our products that we're currently selling. We also are on the social media platforms such as Facebook, Twitter and Instagram and our our tagline is life survivor. Excellent. So tell me uh, I think everyone can relate to knowing someone that uh, has gotten that unfortunate doctor's visit and have been told this terrible news of a relative of theirs, a friend of theirs they have had uh, being diagnosed with a cancer of some type. Again, your, your program life Star is not all about cancer, but I think cancer is definitely right. the, the big 
the big elephant that uh, changes lives so quickly. Absolutely. What, what advice could you give to a loved one that recently found out news that one of their loved ones does have cancer? Because it's, I think it's hard to know how do you help them. You know, your, mm-hmm. your heart starts racing. Uh, you get this devastating news. You want to be there to support your loved one. How your loved one mm-hmm. takes the news, I'm sure, has lots of different variations as well. Yeah, absolutely. But being that you are a survivor, being that you've taken the news and you survived the news and you surround yourself with people to help you get through it, mm-hmm. you know, what, what can we take away from that experience to help our listeners that are now dealing with this situation? They don't know what mm-hmm. to say, how to say it, how to help. Right. Um, what can they do? What do you What do you think helps the majority of people you've met mm-hmm. uh, take the first step towards recovery and this battle they're about to have uh, against this monster we know as as cancer? Right. I, I think that's such a good good question. I think the initial thing is to stay human. I think when you know someone comes to us with, uh, "Hey, I've been diagnosed with cancer," our first response is to try to change it somehow to try to do something. But um, in my experience, I think the first response, you know, that helps, that has helped me and I've talked to many survivors who received cancer diagnosis is just to take it in with them, right? Just to, you know, be silent and let the person just talk, right? Because I think, again, we try to react without really just letting it sit and settle and then really actually seeing how the person is Mm -hmm. because our, our, our human tendency is just to react and do and change, but just, just, you know, let that person absorb, you know, the, the impact, because I think once they kind of settle into the diagnosis, initially the initial blow, you know, it's, it's, it's devastating. Nobody wants to hear that. But once they settle into that initial diagnosis, then the response could be something similar to, um, it's not a death sentence. Right. You know, I know a person who survived 10 years or, or what can I do to help research various doctors? And cause, cause I, I, to me, when I was diagnosed, I am maybe different. I went into some fire mode immediately. I knew it wasn't going to beat me. I started being my own advocate. I started researching and I started asking questions, et cetera, et cetera. So I was, I'm very much a doer. But um, in hindsight, I think it would have helped me even more if I had just sat with it for a little while and just take it all in and then start getting some outside uh, feedback, right? Because it gets so overwhelming with everybody trying to help. You got the doctors in one year, you got your family in another year, then what am I going to do with my employer? It it, it gets to be too much. So I think my advice to supporters or individuals who have family members or friends or colleagues coming to them with a diagnosis such as cancer, just to sit for a minute and just let that person be human to digest it and cry and whatever they need to do initially without a reaction from anyone else. Let it be their reaction first and then you as a supporter respond to their reaction. Makes Does that sense. make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Perfect sense. So let's, let's yeah. fill the table a little bit. As mm-hmm. a survivor, what yeah. tips could you give people that get that terrible news and they need to figure out, okay, what's my first course of action? What advice can you give them? Is it diet? Is it exercise? Is it a relaxation? Is it yoga? Is it mm-hmm. handling the situation, handling the news? Is it talking about it? What do you think is a best first step for someone who's been diagnosed and now has to face uh, chemo or other alternative options for cancer treatment? What's, mm-hmm. what's the first step towards recovery? What do you recommend? Well, I hope so. I would recommend, of course, getting the information from your doctors first. Okay. I mean, because you, you got to know what's happening with your body, right? So don't go on the internet and do a lot of research and get overwhelmed. Get the information from your doctors, and 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 also just not the internet. Don't get so much information from friends and family and colleagues, right? Because mm-hmm. people are gonna try to inundate you with information. Some might be great. Some might just throw you into a deeper depression because it could be just not your type of cancer or not sure. your specific situation. And that's their so, to help, obviously. Exactly. They're trying they're to not help. Really helping. But they're could... actually hindering to some degree because they're giving you Absolutely. information overload and things that may not be true or accurate. Absolutely. So make sure you're staying connected with your doctors and uh, understand what's happening. Ask a lot of questions. I got 
second and third opinion because initially I'm like, okay, I can't believe this is happening to me. I'm not I'm not a bad eater. I exercise. I'm I'm young. You know, I'm healthy. Healthy. So I uh, made sure I talked to my doctors and fully understood what it was they were saying that I had, and then their uh, recommend recommendation on how to. Uh, put me into a non-cancer state, right? So the chemo versus surgeries, et cetera. So that's the first cause of uh, action, I would say. And then the second thing I would say is you're working on your physical body as you're talking to your doctors, but you got to get help mentally as well. Right. Um, so for me, it was my faith. It was staying connected with my church. We have a cancer support ministry at my church. And so I stayed connected with individuals who were going through the same exact thing. I had ladies that I was talking to who were recently diagnosed at the same time who I talked to to this day, and it's almost 12 years later. Right. So you've got to make sure that you stay connected physically to what's going on by connecting with your doctors and then your mental state, because that is just as vital um, to your recovery as the physical chemo and surgeries and radiation and whatnot. So those two things, I think, are vital for you to pay attention to. But the first tangible step would be connect with your doctors right. and then um, stay fit mentally. Makes sense. I, I always say it's mind, body, and soul, and you, you can't Absolutely. leave any of those components out because it's it's, it's all required for ultimate uh, survivor uh, you know, to increase your chances for survive, you know, surviving and to get you ultimately your health back. Yeah, um, and that's the thing we were trying to do with Life Survivor. Yeah, I mean, we were sense. trying to initially, yeah, we, we were trying to initially create this movement and... <laughs> I'm really excited because we have a lot of things in the pipeline with the company because it was more not so much about selling a product, right, a, a, a tangible widget, if you will, but it really was about creating a movement of survivors out there sharing their stories, getting connected through social media, and really just feeding off of one another. That's mm -hmm. that's the mental piece that we really were trying to do initially, and then the second piece would be the tangible product of a t-shirt or a mug or a hat to say, hey, I survived. But the primary purpose really was to try to create a movement of survivors sharing their stories, talking to one another, reading blogs, and just, you know, inspiring one another. That makes sense. Is there uh, peer groups for each type of cancer out there already? Are you able to connect them through your website or through social media of some way? And that's what we're trying to do, David. We're, we're Next year, we're going to be launching a big initiative where we're connecting more with uh, cause-based organizations like Susan G. Coleman and uh, Colon Cancer Coalition. And again, not just cancer, but other organizations. And we're doing the research now to figure out what organizations we can partner with so that when individuals come to LifeSurvivor.com and they purchase a gift for someone, that then they can also keep celebrating by connecting that survivor to a group or to uh, another individual, if you will, who can help them and, and, and organizations that can help them. Because again, our purpose is really to celebrate the survivor and you can celebrate someone by continuing to exp inspire them and, and getting them support and helping them. Because as I said before, I think about cancer every day sure, and it's been almost 12 years. So just because we are a survivor, we keep thriving by keeping that mental state strong and st still connecting and paying it forward. Those people who inspired me, I am now inspiring others because somebody helped me. That's what it's about. That's excellent. And yeah. I guess the next step would be once you're diagnosed or realize you have to go through the, the treatment, uh, mm -hmm. trying to find that peer group. Do you have any recommendations uh, based on the type of cancer they have? Should they Google peer groups for a certain type of cancer? Or what do you, what do you recommend is the best place to find that peer group, regardless of what city they're in, what state they're in? Is there mm -hmm. a recommendation for next step to find that peer group? Yeah, I think the first place to start, most major cancers have a national organization. Okay. So for breast cancer, it's Susan G. Coleman, right? And you can go to, I'm just using this as an example, and I'll use another example in a moment. But for breast cancer survivors, you can go to um, Coleman.org. I believe it's kcoleman.org is the website. Whatever the national organization for that particular mm -hmm. cancer, they have links to local offices. Okay. So for example, in the Charlotte has a Charlotte affiliate of Susan G. Coleman and they have the Buddy Kemp group, which they have a, a Buddy Kemp house. And that is a, a, a subsidiary, I believe, of Susan G. Coleman Charlotte that um, 
is an organization, like a meeting group for breast cancer survivors. So I would say whatever your cancer is, if it's colon cancer, start with the Colon Cancer Coalition, the national organization, and then they will have a link to the Charlotte affiliate. And then call the Charlotte affiliate or wherever you're located in your city, your local city, call that local affiliate, and then they can connect you with uh, focus groups, other survivors, et cetera. That's always the first por- place to start. That makes a lot of sense. Now, what about the Cancer Centers of America? I know they have probably, I guess, five across the country where you mm-hmm. move in and you just change your whole lifestyle, your whole, you know, your whole life changes because you now are having rehab there, you're having chemo there, you're going the whole uh, process of rehabilitation at one location. Do you know when it's been yes. through that uh, process? Has it been successful for them? Well, it, it's amazing. Um, yeah, I, I, I've never um, connected with them. I just go on their website and I read some of their wonderful survivor stories. Yeah. But, I mean, you just said it. I mean, they, they're doing tremendous work. Um, and, and I see the I see the TV commercials. And, you know, God forbid, um, if I were ever to be faced with another cancer diagnosis, I, I definitely would connect with them because I do feel um, – a connection when I see their information online or see it on television. I see all the great work that they do to help survivors. So that's definitely uh, an avenue I would persuade people. But I, I but, but it's, it is huge. Like you said, I only have like five or six locations nationally. But for me personally, I needed that local connection. Right. I needed to be able to call someone. So I don't know how quickly you would get to a person uh, starting with national level right. of an organization. But uh, for me, like I said, I needed to touch bases with the, someone in my local area. And that's how I got connected with the Susan G. Coleman affiliates. I actually have a connection with the Colon Cancer Coalition, but the Charlotte affiliate, etc. But it really is to each his own. Cancer affects people in so many different ways. We're all so different. Um, it really depends on the survivor, the person going through how they feel is best for them. That's one thing as a supporter I think we should never do is push our ideas or our ways on the person going through. It's their struggle. It's their battle. You should respond to them, not the other way around. Right. That's a great point. I actually like you to say it one more time because I think that's the the tendency of all people is we, we want to help. Right. And we want to push our ideas or we feel we may know more than they do, or we feel like Absolutely. what we've heard is better. We know other people that have been through it, and here's what you should do to fight your battle. So please repeat it one more time for our listeners. So they understand how important it is for the person that's, that's been diagnosed to, to handle their own path. Go ahead. Absolutely. The survivor should be the person um, determining their journey, right? As a supporter, it's our job to support, listen, and respond to the survivor based on the survivor's response. It should never be the other way around, meaning the supporter should not force their way or their thoughts, their ideas on the survivor because that can be overwhelming and stressful in itself, right? Sure. So just make sure you're you're really listening and digesting what the survivor, the person going through the adversity is telling you. Really listen to it because you're going to support them and help them by really listening, taking in, and then responding responding genuinely to their thoughts because they're the ones going through it. They know how they feel. They don't need you to tell them how they should feel. So just make sure you're very much aware as a supporter that you're actually supporting and not pushing that person um, to do something that is more of your journey and not theirs. Exactly right. No, I think you're exactly correct, Charlene, and it's been a pleasure having you on the show. Uh, Wonderful. Let's repeat again how people get a hold of your products, lifesurvivor.com. Is that correct? Absolutely. And, and on Facebook, on Twitter, media. you got it. Excellent. Thank you so much, well, David, for having me. So I really appreciate you. it. I appreciate you taking the time and spreading the word and helping so many people. And again, people that are listening, uh, keep in mind, it's not just about cancer survivorship. It could be domestic violence. It could be uh, you know, anything in life that has been a real tragedy. It could be a death of a family member. It could Absolutely. be anything that really just takes you back a step or two. It could be a loss of a job. It could be you know, anything that's catastrophic, anything that really changes how you do your, your daily activities, uh, you're a survivor of sorts. Uh, obviously, we think of cancer and survivor more hand in hand, but I think you're correct. I think just having that t-shirt that I had or that item to say, hey, I'm a survivor and I learn from it and I'm moving on and I'm not ready to go yet. So uh, I'm a survivor and here's my token to show that I'm a survivor and a fighter and who wants to, who wants to fight with me? Who wants to prove that they're a survivor along with me? So I think that's fantastic. 
And again, wow. Well uh, said. Thank you. Charlene, thank you again for being on the show. You're listening to Perky Collar Radio Show. I'm your host, David M. Frankel. You're tuned in to WDRB Media, the voice of the community, the only station giving you double the information and inspiration. And we'll be right back after the break. <laughs> 